Nicholson. Um, I've got many roles, but the role that I'm speaking to today is as campaign organiser for um, both uh, Ouse Valley and Ringma by-election campaign and then more recently uh, Lewis Bridge by-election campaign where we've won two seats in the last four months. Mm. So this is a little bit challenging to do in this way and I'm really sorry for not being able to be there in person and um, I had hoped to come and see you all and spend some time with you. I'm missing um, campaigning at the moment. Oh I've just now I've got a lot of the ceiling. Thank you that's better. Um, and so I'm going to do my best to tell you a little bit of our story um, and I guess David's asked me to talk about um, how we won and, and in particular talk about it from the perspective of our, our win in September which is a district council win in a traditionally very conservative rural seat. Um, and I'm going to talk a bit about, I'm going to tell you a bit about the history, but I'm also going to talk a bit about what I think makes, made it successful. Um, and I'm not going to talk for very long because it's quite challenging to do it like this. And then perhaps we can, we can have a more of a dialogue where you can ask us some questions. I think it'd be more useful, perhaps. Does that sound like something you might want to hear about? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, let me show you our um, let me show you our ward, so that you get a sense of um, oh God where is it? Uh, you get a sense of uh, how similar it is to some of more broadly um, rural uh, mixed rural Oxfordshire I guess. So this is can you see this picture? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so um, our ward is um, on the marked register. There's about 4,000 people. It's geographically very, very spread out. Uh, it's outside of Lewis Town. This picture on the top, I guess, as you're looking at it, the, the aerial photo is Ringma, which holds um, about 3,500 people. It's called a village, and therefore it has a parish council, but actually it's not like a village like I, I would know. It's, um, you know, it's got a school, it's, well, it's got two schools, actually, it's got a primary school, it's a secondary school, it's a big urban conurbation, very mixed um, community across socioeconomic groups, um, and traditionally has been a place where older people go to retire, but more and more these days, because housing is, a, is much more affordable to live out in Ringma, people... Um, younger families are going out there and then our ward also includes um two three villages like proper villages and that's what those pictures are on the um opposite side of the aerial photo uh that only hold like two three hundred people at a time um on the electoral register and um, again a very mixed a very very mixed community uh, and then we've also got a um, quite uh, poor community, uh, a much lower socioeconomic group in the very bottom part of our ward. Our ward is spread over 15, is 15 miles long. Um, and uh, this part, South Hayton, is a part that we had never canvassed in before. Um, and, the, and the mark register says there are about 700 people, um, that the, the unmarked register says there's 700 people living there, but actually there's a, only a third of those people vote. So that, does that give you a bit of a sense of the kind of community in which this is um, based, what it's based in? And a political makeup was in 2015, which was a general election year, turnouts at about 70%. And the two of the three district council seats that were taken there were two Tories really comfortably, like really comfortably, but having over 50% of the vote and uh, a Liberal Democrat. And then uh, we stood um, and effectively came in uh, fourth place, so missed the um, opportunity. And the Liberal 
Democrats in this part of the world are not lazy. So they're really the opposition to the Tories. Um, they're busy, they produce, you know, they're, not, they're not super busy like us, but they do produce stuff. Um, and uh, the Tories are in this ward are super lazy. So, uh, you know, they might, at an election time, do an overarching, you know, glossy leafy that looks a bit like a newspaper um, in full colour, but that would sort of be it. Uh, and overall, the Tories um, are in control of the District Council, with the Liberal Democrats being the single largest group. And in 2015, we had three Green councillors. And there's a whole load of uh, independents that go along with that. So our story is that our candidate, and I'll just share with you him, and he also happens to be my husband. This is him. There you are. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, great. Um, he... Um, he came, uh, the, the long story is that when we moved to this ward uh, seven years ago, he uh, joined the parish council um, in about 2012. And then he got co-opted onto another local council, parish council in Ringma in 2014. And, on, and he's been campaigning to um, be a councillor for 35 years. And in, in 2016, we started to apply target to win in this ward and the district Green Party agreed that we would break out of Lewis Town and work outside of Lewis Town in, an, in a neighboring ward and use target to win in the county council campaign. So um, Johnny was the, um, selected as the candidate um, and uh, the campaign started in November um, 2016. And in that, um, um, and we applied Target to Win very, very rigorously. So all of the party's resources in Lewis District came to bear in the, uh, we fought the uh, two, May 2017 county elections. And the aim was to get our first green um, councillor on the county council for East Sussex which we missed by 107 votes uh, and coming second uh, although it was you know gutting it was also a massive achievement because in half of the ward in which in which this county council seat was was fought we had absolutely zero canvas data so in the county council, we went from zero canvas data in a part of the ward to um, 20 percent. Um, and that's that resulted in us having in missing it by 107 votes and knowing that we'd got in the then subsequent district council election that then happened in the September. We knew that we had some green votes that we could count on. And we could we also knew because we'd been when we were at the count on the county council campaign, we knew that we had quite a lot of support from Ringma, but we didn't know where it was. So at the end of, um, in May, although we were sore about losing, we weren't, we weren't put off because we knew that next time we would definitely win. So, and then an unfortunate thing happened, although it's a kind of unfortunately, fortunately story is that our, the district, Tory district councillor in our ward um, died suddenly and which brought a vacancy in the same ward in which we live and the same part of the ward in which we've been fighting in the county election campaign. So in September uh, 17, um, we, on the 7th of, of September 2017, after 35 years of Johnny trying to get elected, we got Johnny elected. Um, and with with a very very sizable majority, so we'd um, he'd got thirty six percent of the vote share on a forty two percent turnout, which is high for a district council by election uh, in our part of the world, 
and the Tories were, hadn't moved in their vote share at all. If anything, they'd lost vote share. Um, but most significantly, the Liberal Democrats' vote was reduced by half. So, um, and just going back to, um, just going back to the news. So, um, our campaign was fought on, on two very key things. One was that Johnny could win, which is absolutely critical, I think, to, to winning. So knowing that you may not win the first time, and I know that lots of you, you know, are from um, Oxford City, so you know a lot about winning. In fact, you know a lot more about winning than I do. Uh, and, and you also know that, you know, it's the long game that plays out here. And I suppose I'm, I'm particularly talking to people who are from uh, wider in the county in Oxfordshire, that winning first time isn't, doesn't, doesn't matter. What matters is demonstrating that you can win. And, um, and so we fought this campaign on basically that Johnny could win um, because people want to vote for somebody that they know can win. And we also fought this campaign on Johnny getting thing. We got, had this slogan of Johnny getting things done. So that on the doorstep, um, what it meant we were doing on the doorstep was that we didn't, we weren't being in an, we didn't have to be anti-Tory. So sometimes I think people think that to win in a Tory seat, you have to be anti-Tory. In, in our seat, um, we had to actually take Tory votes. So we had to persuade people who normally voted a Conservative to vote for Johnny. And we also had to persuade people who normally vote Liberal Democrat to vote for Johnny. And that meant that the focus had to be on the candidate, which is super, super critical. It had to be on what mattered to um, those people locally. So, um, and because our ward is not, um, like most wards, is not, is not the same and doesn't have the same issues, um, it meant that we had to produce publications that were different for different parts of the ward. Um, to the extent that when we were doing a monthly newsletter, we would have three different versions of the newsletter aimed at different parts of the community. I can see Ellie going, what? <laughs> How did you do that? Well, we just did it. Um, and, you know, it meant we had photos of all the different, I mean, I, I wish I was there with you um, to give you a sense of it, but, and there's no point, I've got them here, but there's no point. I'll send them to David so that those of you that want it can see what we did. But. Um, you know, we had different photos of different parts of the ward with different people. We majored on Johnny being supported by other people. So normal people like you support Johnny. Um, Johnny did more casework than I've seen him do um, in the last 15 years that I've known him. He essentially acted like he already was a councillor. So instead of um, instead of positioning him as a as an activist or a campaigner, which we did, we could also you know keep writing about all the things that he'd he'd done for people all the time, and they were really really dull things. Yeah, they're the they're the potholes, they're the you know sorting out signposts, they're the they're the more profound um, and caring things like helping people with particular issues. Um, but they were also the really tedious, boring stuff that gets people elected. Uh, and, um, and then, hit, so just going back to what did that mean on the doorstep? On the doorstep, we were very careful to focus our campaign about the person. We avoided normal standard green issues. We didn't talk once about plastics. Uh, we didn't talk once about the environment or if we did, we talked about it in context of green spaces. Um, we talked really about the things that we heard mattered on the doorstep, and then we just fed them back in our publications. Um, we also built quite a big team of people to support us. So, um, 
um, I actually got involved in this campaign because the campaign manager um, of the county campaign phoned me and told me that um, Johnny was, could I help? Because Johnny was going around delivering all his leaflets around the, around the whole two and a half thousand houses um, in the ward. And I was like, is he? Because I didn't really know at that stage, I'm afraid. This was, this was 18 months ago. I was like, is he? Really? He's delivering all those leaflets on his own? Well, I said, that's a complete waste of his time. He needs to be going out there knocking on the doors. So I phoned our friends and relations. We had no delivery helpers in this ward. I phoned anybody I could think of, or I emailed anybody I could think of to help. And we built, built a team of 35 people who still deliver to this day. So even we've got a newsletter going out next week, the January one, and, uh, and they're all getting ready to deliver for next, for next week. Um, we also then upgraded people into canvases, but I can honestly tell you that I, that is something that I still worry about. So I wake up, first thing in the morning going oh god how am i going to convert our deliverers into canvases um we did do a bit of it but but um but not enough uh and um and then publications was our biggest thing so for those of you that know about effective frequency so um what is the effective frequency by which people finally get the idea that it's okay to vote green or it's okay to do some things but between 10 and 14 times somebody needs to be told. And um, we definitely hit, over the nine month period, we hit, um, we hit effective frequency, such to an extent. Um, so we did 10 newsletters, eight hyperlocals. We had thousands of calling cards, four election leaflets, two even poll leaflets. You're thinking I've got, I've got two elections in the same period. Um, and by the time we got to polling day and probably actually the week before in, in, in September, people were telling me that they were going to vote Johnny, vote for Johnny because Johnny gets things done. So, oh yeah, I like, I like, yeah, definitely going to vote for him because he gets things done. So our message, they were playing back the message that, um, that we've been giving them loud and clearly. And if there's one thing that I've learned about publications, because although I'm 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 not really the publications person, I'm the I'm the I'm the organising people person. But if there's one thing I've learned about it, that's that the, the message needs to be super simple, and it needs to be targeted at um, what it is that people. It needs to be a mismatch of what people care about and what matters to us. Uh, it needs to be absolutely congruently aligned. Um, but the most critical thing is don't worry about saying the same thing over and over and over again. It just needs to get dressed up in different ways that really um, make sense to people. Um, and then just to kind of, uh, just to kind of wind up, the other critical thing was our use of data. So as I said, in this board, we went from, in November, we'd never canvassed in Ringma. We had no, we had no data about anybody, anywhere. Uh, and we went from, we've now, I, I had a quick look this morning and we're now at 58% um, uh, canvas for the whole ward. And in some parts of the ward, we're, um, we're at 65%, um, which means that we know where our vote lies. And, and one of the things that um, I think is interesting and sometimes I worry about uh, because it, can't, it means that we can't afford to be complacent is that of that vote, um, of that voter ID, we're currently holding about 31% of the vote, which actually is just about enough to win in a normal um in a normal uh turnout you know for turnouts you know about 30 35 percent that's just about enough to win um but if for example there was to be a general election called in for in 2019 that coincided with our next district council elections i don't think we'd win um because of because i don't have enough data that would that you know would match 
you know, turnout here for general elections about 70%. And I, we don't have the kind of data that would tell us where our vote was coming from at a 70 or 75%. So we've got to do more canvassing and we can't just rely on the support that we've already already got. We have to keep doing. So our, our plan this year, we start the long campaign this year to win. Uh, we want to win all three seats in this ward and really there should putting aside the fact there might be a general election in 2019, which of course none of us can predict. Um, if there isn't, then there should be no reason why we can't win uh, all those three seats in, in, uh, with the right candidates. So at the moment, we're trying to find the right candidates who are hardworking, who, have, who are reasonably well-known or who at least during the year we can build to be reasonably well known. I don't think it's necessary to be completely well known. Um, and, um, and to try and uh, make sure we secure Johnny's seat for another four years, but to win two others to take, to really reduce, to really reduce the conservative um, majority overall in the district council.